Michael Wolff's first book on the Trump White House was an international sensation that sold millions of copies and garnered plenty of controversy. His follow-up book is also being criticized, largely about sourcing, and once again has Washington abuzz. Siege, Trump Under Fire is out today and takes place just after his celebrated Fire and Fury. Just before airtime, I spoke with Michael Wolff about the controversy surrounding his new book and the details in it. All right, so your book, much like your previous book, is getting a lot of attention and creating a fair amount of controversy. One of the reasons this time is because of the sourcing. And you told the New York Times you don't reach out for comment for some of the people you write about because, and I quote, I don't actually believe if you know the answer, it is necessary to go through the motions of getting an answer that you are absolutely certain of. How is that responsible? Let me, let me give you an example. Should I call up Fox News and say, are you biased uh, for Donald Trump? Um, obviously, we know what they would say. They would say, in fact, no, we're not biased toward Don Donald Trump. But should you call Fox News and ask them, did they provide the questions to Brett Kavanaugh in the interview with Martha McCallum, which you write about in this book? No, but a, I knew exactly what they've said because I've actually had this discussion with them mm -hmm. on, on in many other situations. Remember, I've been covering the media mm -hmm. for, for, for 20 years. Um, and I knew that they would say no, and I knew absolutely that they did. Okay. You know, you include a lot of salacious stories in here, not just stories like that and anecdotes in the book. At a certain point, you don't think you need to reach out to some of the people in these no, anecdotes no, and ask them well, if no, it's true? I, th I think this was, this was misconstrued. I often reach out to people. If there's any doubt, if there's any more information I can, I can get, I'm on the phone. I'm talking to people all of the time. However, if it's a situation which I, which I have to go into and I know the answer, I know they're going to lie to me. Remember, remember, this is Trump world. Everybody in it is, what would be the world, word? A liar. Um, this is, you know, what's, what's the, the mantra of, of Trump world? I would say it's deny, deny, deny. But journalistically, um, you know, if you were writing in a newspaper, you well, would reach out and you would include that denial. Im important point. I am not writing in a newspaper. And that is a fundamental thing. Mm -hmm. And the idea that all journalism should be the same, that there aren't different forms, that there aren't different approaches, is, um, is ridiculous, actually, actually and, and not good for journalism. I guess there are some people who say there are serious questions raised, though, when the sourcing is not clear. In some parts of the book, the sourcing is crystal clear. In other parts, the sourcing isn't transparent I, I, at all. And, and, and again, I think that there is there is a lot of sourcing that is not clear here, that it's not going to be clear mm -hmm. here because my, I, I, I am, that's my deal with my sources. You write in the author's note that this book is meant to look at an emotional state rather than a political state. You note that this isn't supposed to be a political political big book purely. So what exactly do you mean by that? I, I, I mean, I'm trying to give a picture of what Trump world is. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of an emotional state, I think it's a crazy place. Um, I, th I think it, it has logic long since um, left this, this world. So you write a great deal about Steve Bannon. And he is quoted on the record a great deal. He's your main avenue, your main window into Trump world. I think, I, I it, think it, I call it, it's him, fair to I say. I call him my Virgil, as in as in a descent into hell. What is his current relationship with the president? I think it's a very complicated relationship. They spend a lot of time thinking about one another, um, um, wondering if they should um, go back to working together, saying that both of them saying that they would never go back to working together. Steve is still the bedrock of a lot of the policies that the Trump administration is pursuing. Um, um, in, in, in many ways, they, uh, they, they continue to pursue them or they don't wander off in other directions. Donald Trump doesn't because Steve is always pressing this agenda. But their conversations are through intermediaries or through smoke signals, correct? They don't actually speak? That is, um, yeah, that's what Steve says. They don't actually speak. And haven't spoken. Uh, that is what Steve says, yes. Um, I want to ask you some specifics about what Steve Bannon said, again, on the record, because it is fascinating. This gets to the idea of the investigations into the Trump businesses. There was a suggestion that the president's personal company is a semi-criminal semi enterprise, and Bannon responded to you, I think we can drop the semi part. So was he joking, or, or what do you think he meant there? Because you, you're right that he did I, chuckle I, when he I, said I, it. I, I think that he's... Um, 
uh, he's perfectly straightforward about, about this. And he's perfectly straightforward about, I think, the way that most people who have been around Donald Trump believe. They believe that, that uh, you know, Donald Trump's long career has been a, um, well, I would say semi-criminal career. Steve Bannon would say lose the semi. So does he have direct knowledge of that, do you think, or just suspect it at this point? I, uh, no, I think he probably has... Um, um, yeah, I suspect he does have direct knowledge of that. Um, do you think Steve Bannon believes that the president obstructed justice? Um, y- yes. Now, I, I would say that, that, that Steve Bannon would go um, and, and characterize this as that's Donald Trump. So, I mean, the Steve Bannon view is, is partly you know what this guy is. There's never been any any um, um, any any illusion otherwise. He's Donald Trump. That's the man you elected. A man who cannot literally cannot tell the truth. At one point in the book, book um, uh, Steve says see, uh, I describe Steve as as saying I cannot tell you how many times he has looked me in the eye and lied to me. Yeah, he's still devoted to him in some ways. Well, he's still, I mean, it's a weird devotion. It's, it's love, hate, mm-hmm. or it's, um, um, you know, repulsion, attraction. Um, you know, remember, Steve, Steve made Donald, Donald Trump president. Donald Trump made, transform Steve into a, 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 a voice mm-hmm. in the world. Back to the obstruction issue, the reason I was asking if you think that Steve Bannon thinks that the president obstructed justice, because you write, Bannon, saying, never send a Marine to do a hitman's job. And he's talking about yeah. Robert Mueller. And, and I wasn't sure what that meant. It made me wonder. I think I can explain okay, what Okay, go it, ahead. Did, what, well, what did, it, did he want Mueller to catch him? I, th- I he doesn't want, he did, it depends, I think, on the moment of the day. Sometimes as, he as wanted as, Mueller to catch him? I, I think sometimes he believed that he would catch him, that it, that it was inevitable. Um, you know, um, uh, but, but but what he r- literally meant, and it's really it's really interesting because I think it goes to the heart of where Mueller is now and what we think of, of this in, investigation. Um, Mueller is a guy who who is an institutional guy. He defends the institution. Um, he's not going to. But if I think if the choice became for Bob Mueller, um, give give Donald Trump a pass or risk Donald Trump pulling the temple down. I think he would give Donald Trump a pass. And you write that. Yeah, you write that very clearly. So just in closing, what do you want people to take from this book in and apart from the first one? I, uh, this is, um, I, I think that it gets crazier and crazier, that, um, that Donald Trump is more isolated, more alone, that as we see this, and, and there's often this, this um, I, we, we, we let it seem that Don, Donald Trump is this dominant personality. I, I think this is the story of a meltdown, one of the greatest political meltdowns of all time. Well, where do you think it ends? In tears. Whose tears? Donald Trump's tears. Where does Steve Bannon thinks it, think it ends? There. In Donald Trump's tears. And uh, let's, let's put it this way. I said to Steve, I, I referred to... Um, um, the possibility of Trump getting another term, winning the election. And and Steve said, stop. 